Welcome to all of you in this third part of the digestive system. Before this, in our two videos, we saw that how the food reached duodenum, and now we will see that what happens when the food exits the duodenum and enters into the jejunum, which is the second part of the small intestine. Now, see the inner walls of the jejunum are lined with finger like projections, these finger like projections are called villi. Each one of them is called villus and each villus is supplied with a network of the capillaries and a lymph vessel which is called lacteal. Now between the bases of these two villi there are glands which are called intestinal glands or crypts of Liberkun. Now the script of Liberkuns or the intestinal glands secrete some secretions. Now what are the secretions we will see one by one. So in the intestinal juices following things are contained. The first one is erepsin. Now erepsin is a group of proteolytic enzymes. Again I will explain you that proteolytic enzymes are those enzymes which act on complex structures of protein and break them into simpler proteins. Now, so eruptions are group of proteolytic enzymes and basically there are three enzymes which come under this group. Okay. First is aminopeptidase, second is carboxypeptidase and third is dipeptidase. So let's see the functions. So aminopeptidase, aminopeptidase breaks down the peptones and peptides and convert them into amino acid. Now carboxypeptidase, carbo carboxypeptidase also performs the same function. It also breaks down the peptones and peptides into amino acid. Now the third one dipeptidase, dipeptidase is an enzyme which breaks down dipeptides and convert them into amino acid. Now, so we can say that eruption is a group of proteolytic enzyme which ends the digestion of protein by converting it into amino acid. Now, the next enzyme is called lipase. Now, lipase is the enzyme which ends the digestion of fats by converting it into fatty acid and glycerol. The third one is enterokinase. Now, see, enterokinase is not any proteolytic enzyme. It's just an activator which activates trypsin, uh, trypsinogen into active trypsin. Now, the next one is a group of sucrase, maltase, and lactase. Now, as the name suggests, sucrase, maltase, and lactase they break down sucrose, maltose, and lactose into monosaccharides, and in this way, they end the digestion of starch or polysaccharides. Now. The fifth one is nucleases and nucleotidase. Now see, nucleic acid is broken down by the nucleases and is converted into nucleotides. Now those nucleotides are broken down by nucleotidase and are converted into nucleosides. So in this way, the end digestion of nucleic acids. And last one is arginase. Now arginase converts arginine into urea. So all these enzymes are secreted by crypts of Liberkun which are situated between the bases of two villi and together all these enzymes are called succus entericus. You have to remember it succus entericus. All these enzymes are together called succus entericus. Now we will see one by one that how the substances are digested. Now see how they are broken down. So let's start from protein. So peptones, peptides are the complex form of protein. They are acted upon by trypsin and chymotrypsin and they are converted into dipeptones now or dipeptides. Now these dipeptides are again acted upon by dipeptidase and ultimately it is converted into amino acid. So in this is the way that how protein is digested. Now next let's see the digestion of starch. 
Now, as far as starch is con uh, concerned, starch or polysaccharides is first broken into disaccharides by amylase. Then there are three types of disaccharides: sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Now, sucrose is acted upon by sucrase, and it is converted into glucose and fructose. The next one, the maltose, is acted upon by maltase, and it is converted into glucose. The third one, lactose, is acted upon by lactase, and it is converted into glucose and galactose. So here, glucose, fructose, galactose. These are the monosaccharides or the simplest form of starch. So in this way, the digestion of starch takes place, and the simple most substance is absorbed by the small intestine. Now let's come to the fats. How fats is broken down and how it is digested. So fats is acted upon by lipase. and it is converted into diglycerides now those diglycerides are again acted upon by lipase and ultimately they get converted into fatty acid and glycerol which is the end product of fats which is absorbed by the small intestine now let's come to the nucleic acid now the nucleic acid is first acted upon by nucleases now these nucleases are further broken down into nucleotides and the nucleotides are again broken down into nucleosides by nucleotidases and nucleosides are broken into sugar and bases by nucleosidases so in this way the digestion of nucleic acid takes place here sugar and bases are the end product so this is how the different substances are first broken down into their simplest form and how the digestion takes place after that we will see that how the absorption takes place in the jejunum now see actually these uh, villi are found throughout the intestine throughout the small intestine and their purpose is to increase the surface area for absorption now let's see that how the absorption takes place so there are four ways through which the absorption takes place now the first one is simple diffusion when i say simple diffusion is it acts on the principle of concentration gradient that means the materials are pushed or forced from a higher concentration to a lower concentration the next uh, okay one more thing through this method small amount of monosaccharides some amino acids and some uh, factors like uh, chlorine which are called electrolytes those are absorbed now second one is called facilitated transport now facilitated trans facilitated transport as the name suggests that we need someone's facilitation or someone's help so here the glucose and amino acids are digested by carrier proteins or i should say are absorbed by carrier proteins so carrier protein just force them inside the intestine so facilitated transport that means absorption by carrier proteins some glucose and some on, some amount of uh, this uh, nucleic acids are absorbed through this means now see osmosis now the third way of absorption is osmosis so what happens in osmosis actually there is lot of confusion between uh, many people that what osmosis is actually so first of all let me explain what osmosis is osmosis is a kind of movement of water from an area of less solutes to a, to an area of more solutes so sometimes it feels a positive of concentration gradient okay so here in osmosis what happens water moves from an area or a solution where there are less solutes to an area or solution where there are more solutes so this process is called osmosis so water is absorbed in the intestine through the process of osmosis 
लास्ट वन इज एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट नाउ एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑकर्स अगेंस्ट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ग्रेडियंट दैट मीन्स इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट विच टेक्स प्लेस फ्रॉम द लोअर कंसेंट्रेशन टू हायर कंसेंट्रेशन नाउ सम अमाउंट ऑफ मोनोसेकेराइड्स सम अमीनो एसिड्स एंड सम इलेक्ट्रोराइड्स लाइक सोडियम आयन आर एब्जॉर्ब थ्रू दैट मीडियम और थ्रू दैट वे सो इन दिस वीडियो दिस इज इट इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल एंड दिस टॉपिक थैंक यू